The flower of life is a geometric figure that consists of multiple evenly spaced, overlapping circles arranged in a symmetrical pattern. It is a symbol with deep spiritual and mystical significance, found in various cultures and religions throughout history. The pattern resembles a flower, and it is created by evenly connecting the centers of multiple circles, forming a hexagonal pattern in the center. I want you guys to know about a 6,000-year-old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Have you guys ever seen this before? Now, you know this is one of the oldest symbols in... Um, human history, right? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt, and it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs. And the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. The same secrets that Pythagoras was desperately trying to uncover. But the problem was they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional frame, and as a result, they got stuck in this plane, a flat plane. Now, what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do, they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently, there were secrets inside of it. Shapes, they got the Macurba and all of those other things out of it, but they were misled by something I think called a straight line. You guys believe in straight lines? You believe there's straight lines in the universe? Well, let me hit you with something. All energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. If something is still, there's no energy. Kinetic, right? All motion is expressed in what? You look at galaxies. Are they expressed in straight lines? Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. You show me where the platonic solids come from. Where do they have their foundations in our universe? Are there any straight lines? If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. That's been the mistake. We've been looking at these straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are, back with the curvature of nature. And we have all these little pieces. Now, this has always been an information system. So comp compare some of these points. Take a point here and say, well, what's the space in between all of these things? Now, they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the Earth and this is the moon right here, all this in-between space is it filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. The elementary fundamental particles that they've been searching for at the CERN Collider, the Hedron Collider and CERN, I found that their energy signatures matched perfectly to some of the pieces that I was able to pull out of here. I've spent 45 years searching these things out and trying to figure out what the universe really, how it really worked. And we've come to find that the universe, they are abandoning the standard model, the ideas of black holes and dark matter for an electric model of the universe. There's tons of paperwork of da Vinci working on the flower of life and trying to unravel it. But every single existence, every single example, you see him making straight lines and trying to make these straight lines bend in and therefore he was never able to open it up because all the universe is curved, all space is curved. And as a result, what I was doing in trying to find these straight lines, I abandoned the idea of the straight line. The shortest distance between two points is curved space because you cannot force your way straight through space. Even electricity, as it moves from the, a southern plane to a northern plane, it always goes northeast in its direction. And magnetism, as it expands out, it goes southwesterly. And that's the spin. That's how you always know whether it's magnetism or electricity. It's the spin. Is it northeast or is it southwest? But in trying to define the spaces, it allowed me to see that all of these in between, what we have been dealing with is these petals. All of man, mankind have dealt with these petals, but is these other shapes that we've ignored constantly. 
Well, those other shapes were the in-between spaces. They were the things that filled up the vacuum of space. And all these particles that I have, um, I think, are the full proof of that. And it is also the full proof of the wave particle argument. Old secrets that great minds like Da Vinci, Newton, and Pythagoras tried to uncover. However, they were stuck in a two-dimensional mindset, unable to bring its secrets to life. The universe, filled with curved lines, and vortices teaches us to look beyond straight lines. It is fascinating how our understanding of the universe is shifting towards an electric model, abandoning the old ideas of black holes and dark matter. How might our perception of the universe change if we embrace the concept of curved space and abandon the idea of straight lines? <laughs> The video was captured in Orsondo, Chile, and people are calling the object in the sky a UFO. Witnesses say it looks like a cloud but is slowly spinning. Check out the footage and see for yourself. The following video was captured on November 30th, 2023 in Orsondo, Chile, and their news outlets are going crazy. Dozens of witnesses have come forward with their own pictures and videos of this massive ship in the sky. They're claiming it to be a UFO. Some witnesses are even stating that the object itself was slowly spinning in the sky. It almost looks like a UFO attempting to, clo to cloak itself as a cloud. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Un objeto no identificado, miren. Mientras que hacíamos deporte. ¡Ven que te pueden abducir! ¿Escuchan el ruido? ¿Y cómo gira? ¡Llaman Mega! ¡Llama! ¡El salfate! ¿Dónde está salfate en este momento? ¡Que lo necesitamos! ¿Dónde está salfate? This mysterious sighting of a spinning UFO, disguised as a cloud, has sparked the curiosity of both the public and the media. It leaves us wondering what other secrets might be hiding in the skies above us. The search for answers continues as we delve into the unknown and try to unravel the mysteries of the universe. Why did they destroy all the bells after World War II? Because if you sit in a bell and someone hits it and it begins to resonate, you can begin to heal like that, because sound frequency instantaneously heals the body. Similar to chanting, if you om, any sound effect will begin to instantly structure all the body at the same time. That's what used to happen in the cathedrals. They would ring the bells or they would play the pipe organs and all of the cells in the body would instantaneously become structured, which would instantly heal them. But they had to get rid of the pipe organs, which are made from lead, which is interesting, and they had to get rid of the bells, because both of those can heal people. Now imagine if a bell of the size was ringing in a cathedral. Now imagine the frequency that would come out of the cathedral into the town. You could heal the entire town instantaneously just by ringing the bell in the cathedral. That's why they had to get rid of them. They had to break all those bells. All the bells you ever look up. Just type in like bell in whatever country or city you're in and notice how all the bells have a crack in them and they're broken. I wonder why that is. And people would say, oh, it's a conspiracy and it's just made up. No, no, there's intention. There's intention to get rid of these things so that we're dependent on a sick care system. 
The bells were destroyed because their resonating sound had the power to heal the body, just like chanting or sound frequency. It is foreboding to think about how the removal of these healing instruments was intentionally done to make people reliant on the sick care system. Why do you think there is a fear of alternative healing methods that don't involve the conventional medical system? I remember playing the genie. Uh, uh, you know what? The movie was never real. It was, uh, it's, the rumor started in 2009. I don't know where it came from, uh, but it's not real. For those who said, hey, you saw Suzanne when I was growing up, yeah, you, you did. You, it, it, it did exist. It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes and out of the uh, video stores. Um, I'm lucky because I'm from ex-military, ex-special forces. So we were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. There's three tapes left. There are three Shazam videos still out that we did not find. And if we find you, we're going to kill you. And I just want you to know that. Um, I want you to be aware of that because I felt bad that that you didn't know you were on a hit list. And I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm totally ashamed of that. But I'm just saying, if you have that Shazam video, you're on a short list to have an assassin come to your house. So I'm not saying what to do. I'm not saying, hey, if you want to post it on, on Twitter or something, say, hey, I got the video. But that means your whole family's gone. And I'm just trying to put that out there because I, I feel bad because of my weakness, not admitting that I did Shazam when I was in a bad place in my life. I was in a bad place in my life. And I just want to tell people, it gets better. It gets better. This is one of those Mandela effects that I truly remember as a child. I recall seeing this exact VHS in my neighbor's home. The narrator warns that anyone possessing the Shazam video is on a dangerous hit list. It's unsettling to think about the lengths someone would go to in order to suppress a movie and the potential consequences for those who possess it. And I can't help but think of the underlying purpose of changing some insignificant detail in history. Some think this is just proof we live in a multiverse, and these alternate memories serve as evidence of these universes colliding. This one yet? 